All right, welcome back. So now we're set and ready for our first machining operation for exercise number three, which is going to be the surface high speed dynamic opti rough operation. So we're going to use that operation to get rid of as much material as we can from the top of our cylinder right here all the way down to the blades. And even in between the blades, we're going to get rid of some material as well. So we're going to use it as a three axis roughing operation. And in the next video, we'll go through a finishing operation to get rid of the rest of the material and smooth things out a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, remember that we are under a five axis head vertical mill and you can still use the three axis machining operations here as well. OK, so come over here under toolpath, surface high speed and dynamic opti rough. We're going to call this exercise number three and select OK for drive surfaces. Hold control and hit the A button that will select everything and then hit enter. All right. So now for the drives, you should see 81 surfaces uh, selected for there or really they're solids. OK, now for the containment is where we need to contain our tool within. So basically, I want to contain my tool within the edge over here as well as right here. I don't want to machine the center here. There's a hole in the center here, but I don't want to machine that. That you could do on the side if you want, if you want to do some practice. But I expect you guys to already know how to machine holes, um, how to center mill uh, holes like that. Uh, from previous DVDs, the 3D milling DVD, as well as the regular three axis beginners edition. All right. So come over here under containment, select it, make sure to select solids and under solids, make sure only the loop is selected. So make sure anything else that's selected is unselected and then come over here and select this surface right here. Now it's a line or the edge. I'm sorry that I've selected. If you see all kinds of different lines selected in the middle, all you need to do is come over here to other faces and select it and you'll see now it's select the other face that has a loop and which is the bottom or the outside edge select okay for the first edge for the second one i'm going to zoom in real quick and i'm going to select this edge right here all right and select okay now that you're done selecting select okay and okay to go back to your options for the dynamic opti rough now let's go back real quick all the way back over here to toolpath type and I just wanted to see that you can actually change the options again over here. So if you don't like the containment boundaries or you don't like the drives or anything else, you can actually change them over here. So under tool, we're going to select a half an inch flat end mill. I know in the end of the last video, I mentioned that I'm going to use a three quarter inch flat end mill, but I realized after creating my exercise that it's actually too big and I will need to go back and machine it with a smaller tool before finishing it. So I decided to go back and only use a half an inch flat end mill. OK, and there's nothing wrong with trying different size end mills to see what suits you best. Uh, sometimes you want to use the bigger uh, flat end mill uh, or bigger tool to machine faster, to get rid of stuff faster. So you can just focus on the finishing. So select OK and under comment, let's go ahead and call it dynamic. Opti rough. All right, so I'll go to a holder now and we're going to keep it as default and let's go to cut parameters. So the only thing I'm going to change over here is the step down. So this is stepping down every 50, 50 thou, which is 10% of the tool. I'm going to change that to 75% of the tool, which is going to make it 0.375. Now, this is not quite ideal, just so you know, and I want you guys to actually change this to 50. The only reason I'm changing it to 75 is so my operation doesn't take too long to generate the tool, uh, the tool path. OK, the smaller you make this, the longer and bigger your tool path will be. All right. So this is obviously if you make it to 50 percent, you're uh, making it 25 percent slower or taking longer to machine your part. OK, so the next thing I want to change is also the motion greater than gap size retract. So I'm going to change that to when avoiding a boundary and exceeding a distance. So basically what it will do is it will retract any time it comes in contact or close to a boundary or exceeding a certain distance that it's trying to get to. OK, and there's a, something in between and that comes in handy, especially when you have a curved features like this curved blades that is such we have in our impeller. So it's very important for you to change this to when avoiding a boundary and exceeding a distance. Now, we also want to change the percent of tool diameter to 50 percent and we can keep everything else the same now. The stock to leave on walls and floors, I'm going to leave it at 50 thou. We're going to come over and actually finish that off in the next operation. So we can leave this as 50 thou. OK, so for the rest material, this is only used whenever 
you are creating a machining operation after an operation. So obviously this is our first operation. So you see that we cannot really use it. There's nothing that we're machining the rest or the leftover material from. So keep this off. Tool containment, we're gonna use this center for tool containment to make sure that the tool is at the center of our edge to start out with. Transition, we're gonna change the entry method over here to medial. As you can see, the helix goes all the way down and then it starts machining your part all the way through. For the medial, we'll step down once and we'll machine your part all the way around. We'll step down again and we'll go. So it goes down by steps, all right? So for the Z clearance, it's gonna be 0.125 over your part. Plunge angle, we're gonna keep it at two. And skip pocket smaller than 55 thou. This doesn't really matter because we're not skipping anything, okay? So steep, shallow, we're gonna keep this off. And linking parameters, the only thing we're gonna change is the clearance to one inch and leave everything the same. Now normally, I would tell you to change the full vertical retract over here to minimal vertical retract or minimal distance. This way your tool is not moving, going all the way, retracting all the way back up and then back down. But for this case, because of our uh, features, because of our blades and stuff, we want to make sure to keep retracting all the way up so we don't have the tool collide with our part, okay? So now that you're done, select apply and okay. And then you'll just have to wait a little bit for MasterCam to generate your toolpath. And once you're ready, we'll go over here to a verify selected operation and we can verify that in the simulation to make sure that this is done correctly. Now, there you go. All your toolpath is created. You're gonna see a huge toolpath all the way around your part everywhere. And it looks very messy from this view. But let's go ahead and view it under the simulation. So this is the simulation. Uh, the things that I wanna turn off are the gnomon and the axis, just so I can see my part a little bit better over here. All right, and go ahead and press play. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make it faster as well, just so we can go through our part much faster. So you can see that medial uh, toolpath come in, will step down each time and will machine your part. Now, as you can see, I'm stepping down quite a lot, that 75% of the tool. That's why I told you to use about 50 and even less. Usually you can use 50% of the tool as a step down or less is what you would usually do. I only use 75 is to make sure that this is done faster. And especially because I'm going to be creating some very complex machining operations, it will take very long time to create. But there you go. This is just the roughing of your part. As you can see, it looks really nice. You can see the blades. You can see that the shrouds are the long ones right here and the splitters are the short ones right here. All right, you just make sure. The only thing you wanna make sure is that there's no red spots anywhere and that your tool did not collide anywhere. So there you go. This concludes this session. In the next video, we're gonna learn how to create a finishing operation for the roughing operation.